Congratulations, Polymaker. You made the worst filament. Yay! If people thought it was PLA. But if you treat it like what it actually is, a completely new material, then this might be one of the best filaments you've ever run through your 3D printer. Now, this isn't clickbait because this was actually kind of an issue last year. So here's why. When Polymaker launched CoPE, the community reaction was split right down the middle. Some people loved it, others hated it. And the reason why is simple. They expected PLA, they saw the Polymaker brand, saw the color range, saw the price and thought, this must just be another PLA option. But here's the thing, CoPE is priced like PLA. Right now on Amazon, I think it's as low as like $11 a spool during sales, and it undercuts a lot of standard filaments. That's why so many people assume it was just another PLA. The pricing was that competitive. I think some of the confusion was that people dropped CoPE into their AMS MMUs right alongside their PLA spools. They hit print, and then disaster. Models split in half at the layer change, colors peeled apart, time and material wasted. And if that's ever happened to you, you know that feeling. Watching a print fall apart while you sit there, helpless. It's one of the worst moments in this hobby. CoPE isn't PLA. It's not even close. Think of it the same way that you think of PETG, a totally separate category with its own strengths, its own quirks, and its own rules. And I get it, most of us have been conditioned lately to think that every new filament that comes out on the market is just a flavor of PLA. If you've ever gone filament shopping and thought, okay, what shade of PLA do I need this time? Then CoPE feels confusing. But that's the trap. This isn't just another shade of PLA. It's a different class of filament altogether. Now, before I go further, this video is generously sponsored by Polymaker, and you can learn more about their co-polyester filament and other PLA materials using my link on the screen. And if you want to save 15% on your first order from Polymaker, use my code LMSHOW first try. I'll try and get it on the screen, um, or at least have it in the description. Now, this is a helpful tip. Right now, the only reliable way to tell a CoPE spool apart from Polymaker's other lines of filaments is to check the skew. CoPE skews begin with CA14, now, Polymaker has already updated their spool designs to make this clear, but those won't be arriving to customers until the older spools are sold through. This detail is kind of important because at the moment, the packaging can be a bit confusing. This is the stock textured PEI plate that comes with the Bamboo Lab H2D. And Polymaker says you should never print CoPE directly on this surface. Why? Because it bonds so tight. It can literally rip chunks out of your plate. But instead of swapping to a smooth plate, like they recommend, I'm taking a gamble. I coated this plate with Vision Miner's Nano Palmer Adhesive, and now we'll find out if that's enough. Will this work? Or am I about to trash my build plate on camera? You might think that two hot plastics have to stick together. I mean, just a little bit, right? To demonstrate just how little adhesion there is between regular PLA and CoPE, I loaded orange Polymaker's Polylite PLA and teal Polymaker CoPE into the AMS. I didn't tweak anything. I just used the stock Polymaker PLA profile in Bamboo Studio. I drew a quick rectangle in Bamboo Studio, PLA on the bottom, CoPE on top, and sent it to the H2D. Everything was looking great. Even the change to CoPE looked fine at first, but as a few layers went down, you could see the warping begin right at the transition point as the CoPE cooled. It clearly wasn't bonded to the PLA below. It didn't take long before the warping became severe enough to get knocked completely loose by the tool head. And here's the lesson. This isn't a flaw. It's just chemistry. PLA is PLA, PTG is PTG, and CoPE is, well, it's CoPE. One feature that actually worked perfectly here was the H2D's spaghetti detection. It caught the failed print and shut the job down, flashing its red light, warning on the screen. Now, if you've ever had a print run for hours only to collapse into spaghetti, you know how painful it is, and it's a waste of time and material, or worse, you risk damage to the machine. In this case, it wasn't bad adhesion, it wasn't slicer settings, 
It's simply two materials that will not bond. So then, what is COPE for if it doesn't work with PLA? Why would you want it? Well, that's a great question, and probably the one I get the most about this new material. My answer is simple. It isn't PLA. This is the moment that you reframe it in your head. Stop asking, why won't it act like PLA, and start thinking, what can COPE do that PLA can't? Just like PTG, it's different, and that's a good thing. And I want to point out the finish because it really surprised me. Copie has a beautiful slight gloss to it. Not as shiny as a silk PLA, but definitely richer and smoother than a standard PLA. It gives prints a professional look straight off the bed. And when you hold it in the right light, it just looks so good. And here's something that's exciting. Copie already comes in 27 colors. That means you don't just get the performance you get the flexibility to match projects, prototypes, and creative builds without feeling limited. I know that a lot of you would be concerned about investing in a new material, so I asked Polymaker about the future of Copie, because anytime a new material shows up, people naturally wonder if it's going to last. They told me something about uh, the future of Copie that really assured me, and I'll come back to that in just a bit. Did you know that Polymaker has one of the most advanced research and development departments in the entire 3D printing industry? They're not just releasing colors, they're driving innovation forward by experimenting with new formulas, materials, and processes. Copie is just one more example of how they're pushing our industry ahead. Also, they make the best green that's ever been made. It's my LM Sparkle Green PLA Pro. And uh, that collector spool, sweet. So, what do you do with a material that doesn't like to bond to PLA? Well, you use it to your advantage. To prove it, I designed a rectangle with deep cutouts on the top and sides, a model that absolutely requires support. This time, I printed the model in PLA and the supports in CoPE. The result? Absolute perfection. The printing was flawless and the PLA model lifted off so clean. Every bit of COPE support stayed behind on the build plate. Zero effort, zero scarring zero damage. If you've ever fought to remove supports without damaging your model, you know exactly why this matters. And with a little tuning on support interfaces in the slicer, the underside of any supported print could be absolutely beautiful. Think about how many projects that you've scrapped or avoided because you knew supports would be a nightmare. Copie changes that equation. Instead of worrying about the cleanup, you can focus on the design because you know that the supports will just peel right away. That's a huge confidence booster for anyone who prints complex models. Oh, and don't forget, I also host the biggest 3D printing show on Twitch. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific, we go live, give away 3D printers, filament, all sorts of fun things, and we have a blast with our community. So you should join us over there. We'd love to have you. Okay, now here are the basic specs that you're going to want to know about COPE. Printing temperatures are between 190 and 230 C, very similar to PLA, maybe just a little bit hotter. Bed temperatures are between 25 and 60, with a lot of people reporting that 50 C for the bed was their sweet spot. Now speed, it prints up to 400 millimeters per second which is actually pretty quick, and I would consider this a high-speed filament. I mean, they're polysonic from Polymaker, only prints at 300 millimeters per second, so pretty good. And uh, as far as cooling, yeah, you're going to want the cooling fan on, and if you do live in a an area that has high humidity, you're going to want to be drying your filament first, your Copie first, at about 55C for about six hours if that's needed. If you want to tune your own profiles for retraction, go with about one millimeter at 20 millimeters per second for direct drive extruders, or about three millimeters at 40 millimeters per second on Bowden drive setups. Here's where the bed choice matters. Co-PE bonds aggressively to textured PEI. So use some type of interface layer between the print and the build plate. Something like basic purple glue stick or Vision Miner's nano polymer adhesive, or better yet, swap to a smooth or satin plate. Um, best and safest results, come from those smooth or satin plates. And here's why I think that Copie could have a huge future. Remember earlier when I said Polymaker gave me something reassuring? Here's what they told me. They are going to be expanding the product line with even more colors beyond the 27 already available. That means Copie isn't going anywhere and you can feel confident adopting it. Combine that with the low price and the performance, and Copie could become the new go-to for high-speed, high-quality 3D printing. 
Think about how PETG started small, then became a mainstream staple. I really do think that CoPE could follow that same path. One of the biggest surprises with CoPE is the price. Now on Amazon right now, you can find it for less than many PLA spools and significantly less than traditional support materials like PVA or even uh, BVOH. That changes the math for all of us. Instead of paying a premium for dissolvable supports, you can reach CoPE and get flawless separation at a fraction of the cost. And if you're just printing CoPE as a standalone material, you're getting those speed and superior bridging benefits while paying less than some of the more standard filaments on the shelf. You can easily fill your shelves with CoPE and print all of the things that you traditionally print in PLA. They'd still look great and it's gonna save you some money too. When Polymaker first shared CoPE with me, a cheaper experimental copolyester, I too thought it would be a compliment to PLA. It sounded amazing and I made the same initial mistake of nearly dismissing the formula altogether when I was told that it doesn't bond with PLA. But in reality, that incompatibility with PLA, that's actually what unlocked its potential as a support material. The risky bed adhesion, that just proved how much grip this stuff actually has when you use it in the right way. The price, lower than I expected for what you get. The fact that it prints faster than traditional PLAs and it has better overhangs, this is a completely new type of filament. So now I look at CoPE as one of the most promising new filaments in Polymaker's lineup, not because it's perfect, but because it fills a real need. And if you've ever been stuck on a print because you didn't have the right support material or you just wanted something faster than PLA, but not as temperamental as something like ABS, well, now you have another option. So yes, worst filament if you expected it to be PLA, but one of the best if you use it for what it's designed to do. If you found this breakdown of CoPE helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and drop a comment on what you'd be printing if you printed in CoPE. And a huge thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one. Oh, and by the way, YouTube thinks you're gonna like uh, this video right here. So go watch it.